So in today's video, I want to elaborate on the random numbers video that I made a while ago, which you can check up top. So in that video, I explained what, uh, what with the rand and s rand functions. Now we're going to take a look at how to generate a uh, floating point number. So sure, we know how to generate a uh, an arbitrary integer, but how can we generate numbers between, let's say, zero and uh, two, right? And I want uh, floating point numbers. I want something like to get something like uh, 1.23, 2.45, and so on and so forth. How can we do that? So first, let's start with calling the s rand function. So like any other program that uses the rand function, you should actually call this and say s rand of time of null, just for simplicity's sake. I was going to include time.h here, so time.h, fair enough. So let's create a, a function that gets a floating point number between 0 and 1. So I'm going to call it, I'm going to start with a double, rand double. You can also use float if you want. They are interchangeable in this, in this situation, although with less uh, accuracy. So rand double doesn't take any arguments, it only returns a random number between 0 and 1. How can, you do that? How can we do that? Well, we should call the rand function, of course, but instead of just calling the rand function, what we have to do is first cast it to a double or a float, if you work with floats, that's fine, and then divide it by however, like by the maximum number that you can get. What's the maximum number that you can get from the rand function? Well, you don't have to know that. You can simply say divide by rand underscore max. This is a constant. This is a, uh, well, a macro that has the value, as you can see on the right, 0x7fff, which is really 32,767. So now that we have that, we also have to cast it to a double if you want to do operations on it. And this is going to return a floating point number between 0 and 1. Why? Well, let's think about this scenario, right? Let's think that rand returns a very small number, let's say 1, right? It just returns 1 because, yeah, it just so happened to return 1. Rand max is 32,767, right? So this is going to return a very, 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 very small number that is really close to 0. On the other hand, if for some reason a rand returns a really big number, like let's say uh, 32,000, if you divide it by 32,767, you get a really big number, something like 0 0.9, uh, very close to 1, as you can see. And if for some reason rand here returns the rand max number, so you get this guy, you're actually going to get 1, because those two uh, divided is going to give you 1 as a result. Right. So you can get anything between 0 and 1 inclusive, right? So you can either get 0 or 1 exactly, or you can get anything in between using this method. That's nice. So we can get a number between 0 and 1, a floating point number. So to, to test this, I'm going to just run a for loop here. Just like so. So we have uh, a just a for loop of 100 uh, iterations. And we're using a percent %LF because I'm using a double. If you were to use a float, you should use percent %F here. OK, if I run this, I'm just going to get numbers between 0 and 1. As you can see here, we get 0 0.9, 0 0.7, 0 0.19. And uh, it's pretty nice. Now, how can you get uh, floating point numbers in an interval now? Because we're just getting from 0 to 1. That's not that great. Well, if you want to get numbers between 0 and, uh, let's say, 0 and 5, the easiest way to go about it is to just multiply this whole thing, this whole result, by 5, right? Because, well, if rand double, right, if rand double returns um, 0 0.5, if you multiply this by 5, that's going to result into 2.5. Right, so this is again at the uh, at the middle of the interval. What we want is numbers between zero and five. If the number is lower, let's say zero point one, if you multiply that by five, it's going to be zero point five. And the maximum you can get from this rent double function now is one. Right, and if you multiply that by five, you're going to get exactly five. Right, the other end of that uh, interval. And if you, of course, if you get zero, you're just going to get uh, zero as a result and everything in between. 
think of it as like enlarging the interval, right? So from uh, from a really small zero to one interval, multiplying it by five makes it larger, right? And makes it uh, basically uh, be from zero to five, but that's that's fine, right? That works, but there's an issue. How can we have numbers between, let's say, five and ten instead of zero from five? How do we get this interval? So we have this zero to one interval. We enlarge it, but how can we move it? Right? Because we want to move it from zero to five to five to ten. Well, there's addition. If you add the numbers that you get from an interval, you're moving that interval uh, through the axis. So, for example, if we want to just get instead of zero, instead of numbers from zero to one, if we want numbers from let's say one to two, well, you can say here so zero, one to two. That's what we want to get. If we take the result from this function, let's say it's uh, zero point five, and we add to it just one, we're going to get 1.5. If we get, for example, 0 0.1 and you add one, you're going to get 1.1. If you get the maximum, which is one from this function and add one to it, you're going to get exactly two, which is the uh, edge of that interval. Right? And if you get zero and you add one, you're going to get one. So you're only going to get numbers from one to two. Now let's create a function that does this for us. So I'm going to call it here double rand double interval and it's going to take in two double uh, variables so double a double b right and suppose uh, b is bigger than a at all times how can we get this guy to return so if we call this one how can we get it to return from uh, numbers from a to b so let's start by first calling this uh, rand double that we have here and we need to think about what we need to multiply it with well, in our case, from 0 to 5, we had to multiply it by 5, right? So if we pass in here 0 and 5, we multiply this guy by 5, right? That is the size of the interval. But if we pass in here 5 and 10, we still want to multiply by 5, right? So what we first have is an interval from 0 to 1, and then we multiply it by 5, 5 being the sort of the size of the interval. So I'm going to get numbers from 0 to 5. And what we're going to do next is going to add uh, 5 to it. So I'm going to get numbers from 5 to 10. So this is the process. First, we multiply by the difference between B and A. And then we add, well, 5, which is A here. Right Here we added 1 to everything because 1 was uh, the beginning the beginning of the interval but here we didn't multiply by 5 because 5 was the end we multiply by 5 because 5 minus 0 was 5 if we had the interval be different if this was for example 1 you would have this be 5 minus 1 which was 4 so we had to multiply by 4 at that point I hope you understand where I'm getting these numbers from so now what we have to do is just simply say multiply by b minus a and then simply add the beginning of the interval to it. So I'm going to say plus a and it should be like that and we're going to return this number. Now if we try to call this function instead, I'm going to just copy and paste this and let's say we want numbers from uh, 5 to 10. If I try to run this like 100 times you're going to notice that we get numbers that are higher than 5. So we get 5.064, we get uh, 5.6, but we also get 9.67, nothing higher than, uh, nothing, uh, yeah, nothing like 10 point uh, something, something. We, we might get exactly 10 if, if we are uh, really lucky, but uh, other than that, nothing higher than 10. And we can change these to also be something that's, that are not integers. You can say, I want a uh, floating point number from that is between 5 and 5.5. Why not? If we run this, we're only going to get numbers that are between those two numbers. Right? So 5.45, 5.34, we're not going to get something like 5.6 anywhere in here. And that's really all there is to it. So the first thing we had to do is to create a uh, function that just creates numbers from 0 to 1, right, floating point numbers. 
Then we have to enlarge that interval to however, to whatever size we want to. And then we should move it along the X axis, wherever we want to get numbers from. And that's really all there is to it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.